Earlier in this chapter, we had line integrals. Um, and our primary interest in line integrals was to calculate the, the work done by a force field as you move along a curve. Um, and then we had, we had Green's theorem, which told us that, oh, if you want to calculate a line integral around a closed curve, instead you can calculate an integral over the area contained inside the curve of, of well, the two-dimensional curl of the vector field. So a quantity involving the partial derivatives of your vector field. In the last section, we had flux integrals. Um, so integrals over surfaces that um, one of our applications is for the velocity vector field of a fluid. The flux integral tells you how much volume of the fluid is moving through the surface um, per unit time. Um, there's also magnetic flux and electric flux. For force fields, we care about flux through a surface. And in this section, we're going to have the divergence theorem, which is, kind of plays an analogous role to Green's theorem for line integrals. The divergence theorem says, oh, you want to calculate this flux integral, this integral over a surface. If it's a closed surface, then instead of calculating the surface integral, so the flux integral over the surface, you can calculate another integral over the, the region, the solid region that has volume that's contained inside the surface, and the quantity you integrate is, again, uh, something you get from taking partial derivatives of the components of your vector field. Um, so that's what we want. You want to calculate the flux integral. And, it, and in some cases, it's just so much nicer to calculate the integral over the volume contained inside the, the closed surface. Um, the divergence theorem has lots of applications. Unfortunately, they take um, way too long to do in this lecture. Uh, Gauss's law is a, is a big application to electromagnetics. Um, there's also Archimedes' principle of buoyancy and, and other applications, but those will have to wait until another lecture. So um, <clears throat> first, I need to mention, I need to say something about the kind of surfaces that we're going to look at. Uh, it's a technical condition. I just want to say it one time, and then we'll just assume. So we're going to need to look at closed surfaces, so ones that bound regions. So in fact, they'll be compact, connected, piecewise regular, piecewise regular, without boundary. <clears throat> All this is a very technical way of saying that it encloses some region and it smooth most places um, you know, it encloses some compact region. So it in particular, so I'll call that M, in particular is a theorem that such a surface has to have a well-defined inside and outside. So there's this inside compact region, E, so this is compact solid region. And while M itself has no boundary, M is the boundary of E. E is the solid region inside the surface. So one of the things we write is M is this little curly, it looks like the partial derivative symbol, but you read this as the boundary of E. As I said when we were doing flux integrals, um, ah, I should have said, this also implies the surface is orientable. So there's, you can pick a, a well-defined positive direction. Um, it's piecewise regular, so we're allowing for the possibility that there are some edges where you would have, um, where you might not be able to pick a positive normal, but they're small. They're, they just occur along curves. The problems would just occur along curves. And so in the flux integral, um, that contribution wouldn't matter because you know, the curves have no area. So um, boundary V, we'll, we'll have a, we have a, a standard choice of the positive orientation on the surface. It's outward. There's an inside, there's an inside of M that, and you take your, you take your, 
out, you take outward pointing unit normals as the positive direction. Um, all right. I want to remind you what the divergence of a vector field is. We did this a while back. We've never really used it. It was just something we defined. Well, we defined it exactly so that we'd have it now. So we have a vector field on R3. Really, it just needs to be defined in some open neighborhood of the compact region E. But I'm writing it as though it's defined everywhere. We need for it to be continuously differentiable. And I remind you what the divergence is. The divergence of f, we also write the gradient operator dotted with f. And that's supposed to tell you what it is. If you think the gradient operator dotted with this, you hit this p with the partial derivative with respect to x. You hit q with the partial derivative with respect to y. And you add, and you hit r partial derivative with respect to z, and you add. So that's the, the divergence of a vector field. It may seem like a strange quantity. Um, I'm not going to be able to, to show you even you know, the, the idea of the proof of the divergence theorem. It's certainly, the idea is in the book. It's, um, it's kind of analogous to what we did for Green's theorem. You prove it first on rectangular solids, or you could even use cubes. You prove it first on cubes. It's not particularly difficult, but it's, uh, there are a lot of pieces to it. It's very time consuming. So we're not going to do it. Um, but yes, you prove it first on rectangular solids, and then you show that when you ram two of those together, um, the contributions add on both sides of what I'm about to write. And yeah, and, but we're not going to have time to do that. The, the theorem, the divergence theorem. This is, there are more complicated versions. This is just the most basic standard version, the divergence theorem. With this setup, you want the flux integral over M, so it's the boundary of the solid region E. So the flux integral, so F dot N dS. So here's the flux through the boundary of the solid region E, or what I call the, the manifold, or the the bounding piecewise regular surface, M. And this equals the triple integral over the solid region E of the divergence of the vector field integrated over the volume. This is the divergence theorem. Um, typically, it's this side you want to calculate, and this side might be difficult. And what you hope is that, oh, Calculating this, the triple integral over the solid region, the divergence of the vector field, is easier. So let's look at some examples. So probably the easiest example we could do In the last section, we had a velocity vector field, minus k, so 0, 0, minus 1. In our, our surface, we calculated the flux integral of v through the closed, well, half cone. So we took half a cone, which is piecewise regular. Right? It has some edges and a sharp point, but it's piecewise regular. It only messes up along a curve and a point. Um, and we, we oriented outward, we had the outward orientation. But what we found was that the flux through this, the flux through this surface, the, net, the total flux through the cone part and the, the top, the total flux was zero. And I mentioned that that's not always the case because you could have a source or a sink inside. In terms of the divergence theorem, why is this true? Well, the divergence of a constant vector field is zero. 
if you take the partial derivative of that with respect to x, well, it's already zero, but plus the partial derivative of that with respect to y, you get zero, plus the partial derivative of that with respect to z, you get zero. The divergence is zero, and if you call the solid region inside E, then what we're getting is that the, the double integral over the boundary of E, so over the cone, uh, the flux, so the flux integral, is the triple integral over E of zero dV. Wait, I'll do it in my head, uh, zero. All right. So, and that's just always true. If you have a constant vector field, and you look at the flux, you look at the flux through a closed surface, and so, I mean, compact, all those conditions, compact, connected, piecewise, regular, surface, then you always get zero. The flux through a closed surface of a constant vector field is always zero. Um, all right, let's look at another, a more interesting example. Let's take another example. So as our surface, I'm going to take, I kind of have to draw the whole sphere and wipe out part of it. Right? So let's take a hemisphere of radius 4, centered at the origin. Um, and I want to calculate the flux of a vector field through the closed surface that consists of the hemisphere on the top and the, the flat bottom so, so that we do have a closed surface. So this together will be my M, my boundary of E. And of course, E is the, the solid region contained between the hemisphere and that bottom disk. Um, so that's what we want to integrate over. I'm going to let x, y, and z be in meters so that we can have some units somewhere. x, y, and z in meters. And suppose we've got some fluid that's flowing at a rate of its velocity vector field is given by 3x plus y e to the z, 5y, minus x inverse tangent of z, comma, 7z minus 4. All right, uh, meters per second. And what's our, our question? Or actually, I'm going to write it as a command. Calculate the flow of the fluid. through the surface. In cubic meters per second. Um, flow, you should think flux. It's, this is the flux. This is just another way of asking what we're being asked for. If you call the whole thing M, you're being told to calculate the flux integral of V. How difficult is this to do from definition? We could apply the definition of the flux integral. What would that mean we'd need to do? We would parameterize the bottom disk and calculate the flux integral on the bottom disk. We would parameterize the top hemisphere and calculate the flux integral over that hemisphere, which would require you take the parameterization to get, to get the, well, you don't have to, well, there are different ways to get the unit normal, but you have to worry about the partial derivatives of the parameterization, take the cross product. Um, it, it would be painful. So, but we can use the divergence theorem. This equals the triple integral over E of the divergence of the vector field integrated over the, over the solid region. Um, Okay, well, that doesn't necessarily have to be easier. Of course, this example is rigged so that it is. 
Um, the ugly parts of this vector field, the y e to the z and the x inverse tangent of z, um, <laughs> will disappear when we take the divergence and things will get very nice very quickly. So, we have, actually, let me, let me write the vector field again, where it's easier for me to see it. 3x plus y e to the z, 5y minus x inverse tan of z, 7z minus 4. All right. What's the divergence of this vector field? You take the partial derivative of this part with respect to x, you just get 3. Right? Partial derivative of this part with respect to x is 0. You add to that the partial derivative of the second component with respect to y. Oh, you get 5. And you add to that the partial derivative of the third part with respect to z. You get 7. So the divergence of this, which needn't come out to be 0 in general, or needn't come out to be a constant in general, is 15. All right, so our flux integral then, the flux integral over our surface by the divergence theorem is the triple integral over the solid hemisphere of just 15 dV. You don't need to integrate. To do this, you should know what you get. You can pull out the 15, and then it's just the triple integral of little of dv over e. Well, that's just the total volume, right? You add up all the infinitesimal chunks of volume as you move through e. So it's the volume of e. Well, it's half the inside of a sphere, so half the volume inside a sphere. So you get one half times four thirds pi um, times the radius cubed, so times four cubed. Uh, let's see, you get 2, you get 30, you get 10, uh, times 64, so 640 pi. 640 pi cubic meters per second. And that's the flux. That's, that's the net flow of fluid through that surface per, per time, I mean, in units of volume per time. Um, okay, well that's... Of course, that was rigged to be easy. Can you use the divergence theorem when your surface is not closed? Well, yes and no. You can, uh, you can kind of cheat and use the divergence theorem. Sometimes you can be sneaky and not cheat, be sneaky. So suppose we just call, suppose we call the top part, so the hemisphere part of this M1, and the bottom part, M2. And suppose what we want is just the flow through the surface, M1. So we just want to know the net flow through M1. M1 is not closed. M1 is not a closed surface. It doesn't bound a region. You can't directly apply the divergence theorem to it. Well, that sucks. But what you can do in some cases, and this is one of them, it's designed to be one of them, what you can do is go, okay, even if you start with the problem of you just want to calculate the flux through M1, you stick in the bottom piece so that you can have a closed surface and use the divergence theorem. But then you have to subtract what you stuck in. So what am I saying? We just calculated that if you let M be M is the union of M1 and M2, so M1 together with M2. We just calculated that the double integral over M of V dot N dS, so the flux integral, was, I'm going to drop the units until the end, was, and, was 640 pi. But that's the sum of the flux integrals across the two pieces. So this is... Yeah, this is the same as 
the flux integral over M1 plus the flux integral over M2. And we're after the flux integral over M1. Well, then it's 640 pi minus the flux integral over M2. So what we're getting is the flux integral that we're after. Ah, I switch from, ah, yes. I switch from V to F. This should be Vs. What we're getting is the flux integral that we're after should be 640 pi minus this other flux integral. And you might say to yourself, self, <laughs> how am I getting anywhere? Because, all right, fine, you knew the 640 pi. We'd like to calculate the flux through just M1. So we, we were sneaky. We were sneaky. We wanted the flux integral through just M1. So we just decide we'll stick in M2. So we get a closed surface. We apply the divergence theorem. We calculate, oh, we get 640 pi. And that's the sum of these two flux integrals. And then we can solve for the flux integral M1, but it's in terms of the flux integral M2. How is this any better? We still don't know this one unless we calculate that one. The point is that this one's easy. The flux integral over M2 is easy. The flux integral over M1 is not. M1 curves. And we'd have to parameterize the surface and do some ugly calculation. But the flux integral over M2 is easy. Because M2 is a plane region. And so little blobs of area are just dx dy. You want little infinitesimal chunks of area, you just use dx dy. You want a unit normal that's outward pointing to M2? It's negative k, right? It's either, right, because this is in the xy plane, so it's k or negative k, but you need to point out of the region. So it's negative k. So the flux integral over M2 is easy. And so you calculate the flux integral over M1 by taking, using the divergence theorem to get the 640 pi and subtracting the contribution from M2. We still have to calculate the contribution from M2, but as I've said, that part, which we do barehandedly, you know, and using just what a flux integral is, but that part's easy, is M2. At surface M2, you have the z-coordinate is always zero on M2. The unit normal that's outward pointing is minus k, so 0, 0, minus 1. ds, little blobs of area on the surface, it's flat, just dA, so dx dy or dy dx. I'll just leave it as dA um, because nice things are going to happen. We want to calculate, oh, so m2 then. I'll just write M2. So V, V is this nasty thing. On the other hand, we're going to dot it with N, and N has a 0 here, a 0 here, and minus 1. So as I did before in the last section when I was calculating, when I was calculating flux integrals, if I'm going to dot with something that has zeros for the components, I just put stars in the corresponding entries over here, because it doesn't matter what they are, they're going to get multiplied by zero. Um, the third component of v is 7z minus 4, but we're where z is zero, so it's constantly minus 4 on that part. And you take that, <clears throat> and you take this dot product. And we just get the double integral over m2 of 4 dA. But that's just four times the area of m2. You pull out the 4, you get the double integral of dA over m, it's four times the area. So it's four times, well, the area inside a circle of radius four. So that's 64 pi, right? The units are cubic meters per second. So our flux through m1, you take the 640 pi that we calculated before and subtract 64 pi. Um, so, you know, you can use the divergence theorem sometimes to help with flux integrals through surfaces that aren't closed by adding in a piece that closes the surface, then using the divergence theorem to calculate the, the flux integral over your new closed surface, and then you have to subtract the part that you threw in. All right.
I want to do one last example, and I'm going to do one that's uh, fairly time consuming. It's not difficult, but it's time consuming. Um, I certainly want to at least do one example where the divergence is not constant. I also want to calculate the flux integrals by hand, so from the definition, and verify that you get the same thing that you get from the divergence theorem. This will not be difficult, but it will be long. So as an example, consider the vector field F, which is x squared yz comma 2xy squared z comma 3xyz squared. And I want my surface that I want to integrate over is a cube. The surface of a cube, so if you think of a cube as solid. So I want it to go It has length two on each side, but it, that doesn't, okay, that looks okay. Um, I want it to be length two on each side, and that's, you know, I want it to sit in space in the first octant. So, something vaguely <laughs> like yeah, that's supposed to come down here. Let's do this right. Let's get this more or less right. So I want this cube that <laughs> I want this cube that goes between the x-coordinates are between plus and minus two. The y-coordinates are between plus I don't know what I'm saying. The x-coordinates are between zero and two. The y-coordinates are between zero and two. The z-coordinates are between zero and two. It certainly doesn't look like a square down here. Um, yeah, whatever. So the solid region, E, E is where X is between 0 and 2, Y is between 0 and 2, and Z is between 0 and 2. That's the solid region. M, the boundary of that, has six sides. Right? There's six sides this cube, and that's the surface we want to integrate over. So what I want to calculate is the double integral over m, so maybe I'll write the boundary of e, of this vector field, dot nds. There are six different faces. We're going to have to do, right, this is piecewise regular, but we're going to have to analyze each face separately. The nice thing is they're all flat. Each one is in some copy of one of the coordinate planes, so either a copy of the xy plane or the xz plane or the yz plane. So n will be easy. Um, ds for each piece will just be da. It'll be flat. We're not going to have to parameterize anything, but still we have to do six different calculations to calculate this. But then I also want to do the divergence theorem calculation, so the, the the triple integral over this cube of the divergence of f and make sure we get the same thing. Um, all right, so let's just start. So I'm going to let m1, so one part of my surface, I'm going to let that be where x is 0. So that means x is 0, y is between, uh, is this what I picked in the, yeah, I think this is what I picked in the book. Y is between 0 and 2, and Z is between 0 and 2. Great. And what's the, the flux integral through there? All right. OK. On M1, X is 0. Um, well, then the whole vector field is 0. Well, that made it easy, <laughs> right? If on M1, X is 0, so everything in the vector field is 0. In fact, when Y is 0, the vector field will be 0. When Z is 0, the vector field will be 0. So at least 
and because this is a zero vector field, you get zero in here for the integrand, you'll get zero when x is zero, you get zero when, you also get zero when y is zero, which I called in the book m3 and m5. m3, where y is zero, you also get the double integral. You get that the flux through m3 is zero because the vector field itself is the zero vector field along that piece of the surface. And the same thing on m for m5. So if I let m5 be where z is zero, then you get the double integral, the flux integral over m5 is also zero. Very abbreviated. So those aren't contributing, but then there's m2, m4, and m6, where x is two, where y is two, and where z is two, and those vector fields won't be zero, and you have to do more of a calculation. So let's look at those pieces. All right. On M2, this is where I'm calling M2 where X is the face where X is zero, uh, where X is two, where X is two. Of course, Y and Z are still in between zero and two. We need to calculate the double integral over M2 of f dot n ds. All right, we've got, we've got this cube. <laughs> um, you've got a cube. We are now where, all right, the x coordinate is two. This is, in this picture, this is my x axis. Um, x is 2 is this face. Right? The outward pointing unit normal is parallel to the x-axis, but it points in the positive direction. So on this face, the outward pointing unit normal is just i. So 1, 0, 0. Um, all right. That's the outward pointing unit normal. We're going to put an S is two, uh, X is two into the vector field. DS will just be DA. It's flat. Right? We could use Y and Z as coordinates where X is two. Um, our vector field, I need to write it where it's easier to see, write it over where we can see it. It's X squared YZ, two X Y squared Z, three, x, y, z squared, but we're fixing on this face, we're where x is zero. So when x is zero, I, I don't know why I keep saying that. We're fixing x at two. When x is two, we get four y, z, four y squared, z, and six y, z squared. So that's our vector field, but we could have saved some time. Our normal is one, zero, zero. We only care about this first component, right? Because we've got one, zero, zero to the unit normal. We have dA, um, and our vector field is x, four uh, yz, and then we don't care what's in the other two entries because they're going to get multiplied by zero in the dot product. Uh, DA, we'll have, we can do, well, this we're either going to do, we've got a fixed X, we're either going to use DY, DZ, or DZ, DY, doesn't matter. Um, so what do we get? We get 4YZ, I guess I'll do DZ, DY, and x is between, z is between 0 and 2, 
and y is between 0 and 2. And we need to calculate this integral. It's not bad. It's double integral. It's not bad. You get the integral from 0 to 2. We do this inside integral first. So you integrate the, the 4y is a constant. You integrate z with respect to z. You get z squared over 2. You can wipe out one of those. So you get 2y, 2yz squared evaluated as z goes from 0 to 2. You still have to integrate with respect to y. So you get the integral from 0 to 2 of 4, 8 of 8y dy. Um, you integrate that, you get an 8 times y squared over 2. So a 4y squared evaluated from 0 to 2. So you get 16. So the flux through the face m2 is 16. We still have to do the flux through m4 and m6 and calculate those. They're very similar um, to what we just did. So M4, we're gonna, that's where Y is to. Um, so X and Z are still between zero and two. All right, we have to calculate the double integral over M4 of F dot N dS. But again, on M4, where y is 2, so your y coordinate is fixed at 2, so it's, right, so that's this, this face back here. It's kind of hard to see it, but especially since my cube is so messed up. It's this face back here. Um, where y is 2, the outward pointing unit normal, it points in the positive y direction, just like the Outward pointing unit normal before pointed in the positive x direction. Right now it's pointing in the positive y direction. So our outward pointing unit normal is just j, 0, 1, 0. And our, our integral becomes the double integral of f. Actually, let me move it down some. We're going to dot with 0, 1, 0. ds is dA, and we use x and z as, as our coordinates. So we'll do a dz dx for a little blob of area. We're in a flat face. We only care about the middle entry in our, the middle component of our vector field. So just put a star here, something there, a star here. What is the middle component of our vector field? When y is, when we're on the face where y is 2, it's this, but y is 2, so you get 8xz, and you evaluate from 0 to 2, and you evaluate from 0 to 2, just like we did before. Well, we just integrated 4yz, 4yz from 0 to 2 and 0 to 2, and we got, um, I've lost it, we've got 16. Well, this is different variables, but aside from that, it's the same integral multiplied times 2. We better get 32. Um, I leave it as an exercise for you, right? After you take this dot product, this just collapses to 8xz, and I'm claiming that it's blatantly obvious that this integral comes out to be twice what we had a minute ago, and we got 16 before, so now we better get 32. All right. Um, Maybe I will skip doing the 1 over m6. 1 over m6, where z is 2, you do this, and instead of, you'll get 3 times what we got before. So I'll just tell you, if you do a similar thing over m6, you'll get the double integral over m6 is, um, well, I think you get, yeah, 3 times what we had before, 16, so 48. So you get 48, three times what we got 
the first time. All right, assuming you believe that last one, what is the total flux through the surface? Well, the total flux through the surface, you add up the flux through each piece of the surface. So we get a 16 plus a 32 plus a 48. You get 96. Yeah, and in fact, this was an easy calculation relatively because all right, the sides were flat. That was good. But more importantly, our vector field was 0 on three of the sides, so we didn't do those. And the integrals we end up with on two of the sides, in fact, on the other three sides, are all effectively the same except multiplied by two or three. So we just did one of those and the rest collapsed. So we really had six calculations to do, but in this example, they were fairly easy. But let's compare this with using the divergence theorem. So that's what you get barehandedly in calculating the flux integrals ac across the six different faces. If you use the divergence theorem, you do one triple integral. That doesn't make it easy necessarily, but um, at least it's just one piece to do. So by the divergence theorem, we ought to take the triple integral over E of the divergence of our vector field integrated over the volume. So we have to, this is the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to 2. It's a cube after all. The divergence of this vector field, it is not a constant. It's the partial derivative of this with respect to x, so 2xyz, plus the partial derivative of this with respect to y, that's 4 xyz plus the partial derivative of this with respect to z, that's 6 xyz. And you have to integrate that over the volume, dz, dy, dx, or any order you want, since we're over a cube, it doesn't really matter. It, it, the divergence is not a constant, but at least we can combine these pieces. We get the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to 2 of 12 x, y, z, d, z, d, y, d, x. And we're, I'm going to calculate this, but we better, get, we better get 96, where the divergence theorem isn't working today. But. All right, the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to 2, 12, x, y, z, dz, dy, dx. All right, you integrate the inside integral first, so this one. So we get the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to 2. You just get 12 x, y, z squared over 2, so 6 x, y, z squared. 6xyz squared evaluated as z goes from 0 to 2. And then you still have to integrate with respect to y and with respect to x. So you get the integral from 0 to 2. The integral from 0 to 2. When you put in z as 2, you get 24. When you put in z as 0, you get 0. So I get 24xy. And we still have to integrate with respect to y and x. All right, you integrate with respect to y. We'll still leave you with one integral to do. You get a 24x y squared over 2. So you get, um, you get a 12xy squared evaluated as y goes from 0 to 2 dx. And so you plug in y is 2, and you get 48x minus what you get when y is 0, which is 0. So you get 48x dx. <laughs> you, get, you integrate this. You get 24x squared evaluated from 0 to 2. So you get 24 times 4. Good news. That's 96. Whoopee. 
That's the divergence theorem in some examples. Um, of course, those examples were fairly easy. We made the divergence of our vector fields either come out to be zero or constants or something fairly nice. Our regions were relatively easy. Um, but these are standard kinds of problems that you see uh, that involve the divergence theorem where the, the surface integral, the flux integral itself, if you had to parameterize, would be painful or have many pieces and you just don't want to do that and then the integral of the divergence of the vector field over the solid region is just really easy. Um, those are the examples we like to give. There are more complicated versions of the divergence theorem where you have an outside surface and then an inside surface and you're looking at the region in between. Uh, that's in the more depth section. As are the, the more, the more the involved physics examples of uh, Gauss's, Gauss's law for electromagnetics and um, Archimedes' principle for buoyancy. Um, you can have many harder problems on the divergence theorem, but the ones we just went over are the more standard types, and if you understand those, the rest, the rest involve the same theory, it's just the calculations could be more nightmarish.